Okay. Now, I'm not going to lie. Even though I missed a book out from tonight's live eviction show, I must give this one to Lawrence. Lawrence kind of did great. Yes. I mean, I'm going to be frank with you all. I was kind of skeptical about if Lawrence was going to be able to shake the housemates tonight. But guess what? He actually did. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> I was really impressed, guys. I mean, it wasn't really jarring questions like that because, you know, sometimes Lawrence comes across as kind of harmless. Ibuka is the one with the reputation of table breaker, table shaker, chaos master, you know, the tornado that comes around to scatter everything in Big Brother's house. You know, so the housemates were not really expecting Lawrence to do anything crazy. But then Lawrence really tried, you know, and the way he kept a straight face while also asking his questions tonight it was quite interesting i really liked it so yeah accolades and all the flowers to lawrence yes for how he handled the housemates tonight yes although he was still a bit kind of nice but i'm good i'm satisfied and i loved the way he was literally telling me Buka, you know at the end that he missed him <laughs> that was really cute that was really cute i totally love the bromance between those two amazing personalities but tonight's you know, live fiction is not just about Lawrence. It's about the deception, the sneaky things happening in Big Brother's house, the, the betrayal, yeah, that Lawrence kind of, you know, exposed with his questions. And I'm glad he actually questioned the little players. Yes, I, I, there was a way he put it um, at the start of the eviction show tonight, yeah. Um, not really the major players, but the low-key players, right? See those housemates that are doing X, Y, Z, and then they are acting like, oh, nobody is actually seeing them. I loved the way that Lawrence called them out. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be analyzing, you know, their responses to Lawrence's questions. And I will give you my own opinion now, as usual. I mean, hey, there's no, um, frankly speaking, with Gloria Elijah video without me, you know, also sharing my own perspective. So, I will do that. And I also urge you all to please go ahead and share with me your thoughts in the comment section below as well. And um, you are all especially welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory, and I am the girl with the tea. Still, guys, I want to urge you all to please put Nigeria in your prayers at the moment. We are still in the wake of our general elections that happened yesterday. Um, the results are not out yet, you know, um, the counting is still going on, the collating process is still going on, a lot of shenanigans is still going on, and I don't know, I'm kind of scared. Yeah, I have to be real with all of you. So please put Nigeria and Nigerians in your prayers, okay? Now, um, quickly, we're going to get into this video. You already know the drill. If you are not yet a part of this family, please just do exactly what you see on your screen, okay? All right, quickly, let's move into the conversation. Okay, so Lauren started tonight's questions with um, Nelisa and Tabang. Um, of course, congratulating Nelisa and Yemi on emerging the head of house on emerging victorious with their wager task as well right and i'm um, also asking nelisa if all the preparations for the task you know kind of gave her a distraction from all the drama with um tabang she said yes but guys we know that that's a lie we know that nelisa did not rest this week even as a matter of fact last night after the party nelisa was still breaking her head over tabang and kosi's matter and i'm thinking i mean guys i said i said it all on my video this morning that i don't get it why Tabang continuously disrespects Nelisa. Yes, she had sex with um, Melly. Yes, um, she kind of played Tabang initially and she's trying to come back, but it's not a do or die affair, right? So the way she allows Tabang to walk over her, to make her feel small, to belittle her, to constantly emotionally blackmail her, especially with her past with Melly, it's really a turn off for me. You know, so her response to Lawrence was, a bla was, was just a blatant lie. But anyways, moving on to Tabang, yes, um, Lawrence had asked him what the situation was with Nelisa. And he had said, well, they were having conversations last night and they did not conclude on the conversation. And I just laughed because I'm like, this 21-year-old boy, he's very smart. You can't, see, Tabang is like an eel, an eel fish or a snake. You can't really catch him like this. He's very slippery. So you're trying to catch him here, ask him a question. This dude is like this. Oh, and there was also a conversation that he had with Tati about a special someone in his life. 
So this person is going to be clocking 21 very soon, in a matter of days. And he was lamenting that he was not going to see the person, you know, or even celebrate with the person. And so Lawrence had asked him that question, that, okay, who is this person? And he was acting like he has selective amnesia. And Lawrence was like, um, at least give us something. And he was like, oh, a name or a relationship? Lawrence was like, it would be great for you to give us both. And then he said, oh, he wasn't going to mention the person's name, but the person is, they have a special relationship. Now, the annoying part is, I, right there and then, I was literally predicted that even though this guy had actually revealed that he had a special someone outside, Lisa would still kill herself again tonight just to get a band's attention. Lawrence moved on to Tati and Kanaga Jr. So apparently, these two people had actually used the L word, like they had told each other they love each other. So Lawrence was like, oh, are we there now? And they were like, yes. <laughs> Let me tell you guys this here. Now, a lot of you have said, oh, Glory, we know you don't like Kanaga. Oh, Glory, we know you don't like Kanaga and Tati's relationship. I'm going to be honest with you guys on this video. I actually do not. Yeah. I do not because it is very glaring that it is fake. Their ship is fake. Everything that happens in that ship is kind of forceful, in my frank opinion. When I see these three people trying to do things together, I feel like they're actually trying too hard. They're trying to give us this picture-perfect BB Ninja couple ship. And I, I, it's a turn-off for me. I don't like it. I would rather see the tug of war happening between the whole Kobana ship and the Koyemi ship and the, um, the Kosiku ship. I love that because it is all about the game. But you see whatever Kanaga Jr. and Tati are doing, I'm sorry, I don't like it. And there's nothing your fans can do to make me like it, okay? So yes, they are using the love word now, and for me, it's a joke. <laughs> it's not serious. It's not that deep. So Lawrence had moved on to Yvonne. I reminded her that for someone, you know, that said at the initial stage of the game that she was not in the house to make friends, what changed? Because it seems like, you know, she's got people now. And she said, well, uh, she finds herself making connections every day and she's very grateful for it, blah, blah, blah. I was just looking at Yvonne, I was just looking at her mouth. I'm like, girl, I'm ashamed of your bragging right. At this point, your bragging right is zero to nothing. Yes, because I still remember the Yvonne from the day of the launch show that was actually telling um, Lawrence, yes, I think it was Lawrence that interviewed her. I was telling Lawrence that, oh, I'm bringing the drama. I'm bringing the hill. I'm bringing the, and this was how she was doing her hand that day. I'm bringing the drama. I'm bringing the hey, hey, hey. I'm bringing the violence. I am bringing the hey, hey, hey. Then she got into the house and she saw a fine, juicy South African guy. And she started acting like, guys, every time I see Juicy and Yvonne kissing, I'm bored. Initially, it was very sweet, too. It was very nice to watch. But now, I'm bored. Because I'm looking at this fine chick and I'm wondering, like, okay, where was all, where's all of that guts? Now, she's even scared of losing Juicy outside the house. I listened to her conversation a couple of days ago and I'm like, what's this one? She's like, the guy is so good. Oh, my God. I'm wondering how it is going to be. I'm like, hey, this one is already planning marriage in her head. Guys, I'm disappointed. And that's the truth. I am disappointed. Oh, yes. Um, the gossip gang... If you ask me, I would tell you that that is the only thing that makes Yvonne relevant in that house. Not even a ship with Juicy J. It is that little, little gossip session that she has with um, um, Olivia and Nana from time to time that actually gives her a bit of relevance in that house. Trust me, without that gossip gang, Yvonne will not really have a valid storyline in that house. So when she was talking about, oh, she's creating connections, I'm like, please, shift. On to the next one. Olivia. Yeah, Lawrence moved on to Olivia and asked her to explain her friendship with Blue Ava. Olivia said that they both have an understanding. They understand each other, blah, blah, blah. And then there was this thing that Olivia had told Yvonne and Nana about Ipeleng and Tati not liking Blue Ava or vice versa or whatever, whatever. And Lawrence had said, okay, if Blue Ava is really your friend, why didn't you tell it to her? Why did you have to go and tell it to... You know what's going on there and olivia blatantly denied it she said she owns up to her shit but she did not say that and i love the fact that lawrence reminded her that they actually see and hear everything now this is what i have to say to that olivia is a bad friend to blue ava yeah olivia is a very very bad friend i mean this week we have actually seen how Olivia will have conversations with Nana and Yvonne about this whole um, black boy and 
um, Blue Ava's matter. In fact, let's start with the whole Taban thing. Blue Ava got really close with um, Tabang. I don't know what their friendship level is, but they were just really, really cool friends, hanging out, having conversations, also discussing the whole Yemi and Kosi situation because both of them discovered that they are the side pieces in the Koyemi relationship going on. They sort of built a friendship, you know, based on that to, to sort of like, you know, offer each other advice. And Olivia got really offended with that friendship. She started bad mouthing Blue Ava to Yvonne and Anna. And then she saw that Blue Ava and Black Boy, they started doing whatever after the whole great smooth operator um, issue that happened with Marvin involved two weeks ago. And then she started bad mouthing Blue Ava as well in that gossip session. And guys, the thing just became very, very messed up. And then on Friday, she and Blue Ava had conversations. And Blue Ava told her outrightly that when people gossip about me, I hear it. When people are saying things about me and I pass, I know you're talking about me. But then I'm wondering like, okay, you that is my friend, if you have something to say, why not say it to me? And Olivia was acting dumb in that conversation. So ladies and gentlemen, I was just listening to the whole questioning session going on with Lawrence, Olivia. She was acting, I own not my shit. And I was just wishing that Blue Ava would take a cue from that and realize that Olivia is not really a friend. And then if she would love to indulge herself better, she should play Olivia as well by, Olivia, um, by Olivia's game. And that Lawrence reminded Justin that he was in the house like he did not exist in the house. And Dude was using the week's, you know, hectic weekly wager task as an excuse and i'm like bro no you've been a ghost like a furniture in that house from week one it was just last week when the great divide happened you know and he was very very manipulative and conniving that we actually even heard that oh oh my god there's actually a justin existing in that house but aside that nah nothing anyways moving on to juicy j lawrence had asked him if he felt like um there was anyone that was a competition to him in the house and he said no <laughs> i was laughing i said okay <laughs> bro you have to open your eyes and see clearly <laughs> look around you and you will see that there are actually a lot of competitors around you in that house people that can easily kick you out of that house and that Lawrence had moved on to miracle right asking him why he had all of a sudden mellowed down you know because of course guys we've actually noticed that ever since that uh, meeting that Yemi had about the dishes you know about miracle you know disrespecting him and miracle had seen that the whole house was not taking a side at all to all of his shenanigans dude that decided to crawl back into his shell and stopped creating um drama when it was unnecessary right but then for me I felt like Lawrence question was some kind of um, poking to miracle a reminder to miracle that hey bro you are losing sight of your assignment in that house you need to wake up and give us more drama you know but miracle said that for him he had realized that when he is active he's causing drama when he is quiet he's causing drama and so he just decided to just chill you know and Royce was asking him if there was really somebody you know that had also contributed to talking him out you know of being overly dramatic and if there was somebody that was contributing to mellow him mellowing him down now miracle knew that lawrence was asking about ipeleng you know because of late i don't know many of you have noticed but uh, miracle has been making advances heavily at ipeleng and ipeleng who enjoys creating kissing and touching and fingering content is actually leaning into miracle's advances right and i'm foreseeing something that very soon they will become very active like ipeleng was with luke fingers crossed you know but uh miracle kind of you know kind of outsmarted lawrence a bit you know and then he went ahead to say that oh it was actually tabang that tabang had been singing lullabies to him had been talking to him cuddling with him blah 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 me i was just laughing i'm like bro you're just avoiding the whole ipelen conversation but hopefully when the booker comes back next week we will rope you back into this same spot again then blue ava was asked which of the housemates she had actually operated on since she's fond of calling herself the smooth operator now i was really disappointed that blue ava did not use her full chest to answer that question because she clearly denied it she said nobody now the cameraman was very busy at that point in time cameraman was busy sharing both yemi's face and black boy's face and i was just having a good laugh i said okay i am um, my ears are open to the conversations that will follow through tonight right after the show and then finally um yemi was asked if he was open to 
um, Juicy J's advocacy for him and Miracle to make peace finally, you know, mend their relationship. And according to Yemi, well, sometimes it seems as if he's going to make peace with the guy, but then there's a lot happening and then it just does it just goes you know crawls back into his shell but for him he's not going to force anything to happen if it's going to happen then it's going to happen and ladies and gentlemen i do not see yemi and miracle making peace in that house probably outside the house but for now Mir yemi is miracle's game yeah that's it yemi is miracle's game Kosi is also Miracle's game. I do not for any reason think that Miracle will genuinely make peace with Yemi. He is going to want to use Yemi to stay till the finals and possibly win the show. And then after the show, Miracle is that sort of person that I have seen that will go and shake hands with Yemi and say, bro, it was all a game. So whatever it is about, you know, unity, that's zero. It's not going to happen. But hey, that's just my own prediction. That's what I have seen. That's my observation. I would love to know what you all think about all of Lawrence's questions to each and every single one of the housemates. Just go ahead and tell me your own opinion about it all in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on another video soon. Have an amazing evening. Bye.